bottom. Uh, so the focus of this event is uh, going to be about the PhD admissions at Politecnico di Torino in Italy. Uh, as you may know, Polito is one of the most prestigious universities in Italy and worldwide. And we are happy and excited to give you some more insight into what the actual uh, admission process is to um, enroll for a PhD at Polito. So without further ado, uh, I'm glad to welcome you all to this uh, uh, event in partnership with Polito. And I would like to introduce you to the panelists on behalf of the uh, Polytechnic University of Turin. Um, so, of course, we have the staff of the PhD units, uh, specifically we have Jessica and Davide, so thank you both for your presence here today. It's nice to Hi. Have you. Hi, hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Thank you to both of you for uh, taking the time to be here with us today. And of course, we also have two PhD students. Uh, we have Alessandra, she is the PhD student in Bioengineering and Medical Surgical Sciences. Hi, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for, for joining us. Of course, it's great to have you and we can't wait to hear your uh, testimonial and to hear more about your own experience. And last but not least, we also have Enrico, who's a PhD student uh, in mechanical engineering. Enrico, thank you so much for joining us. Hello, hello to everyone. Thank you for your presence here today. And of course, to all our participants who are still joining, uh, if you have a PhD program already in mind and if you have any uh, programs, um, any questions related to the PhD uh, admissions specific to your own program, please feel free to type your questions into the Q&A box and we'll get to them uh, after the presentation. Now, without further ado, I would like to leave the floor to Jessica so she can give you some more insight into the actual process. Thank you all so much for joining us. Okay, hello everyone once again. Uh, I'll share with you uh, a short presentation on uh, how to apply uh, for the PhD program at uh, Politecnico di Torino. Okay, so, uh, and then we will have uh, a Q&A session at the end of this event, so we will answer to your questions. Oh, okay, so. Uh, how to apply uh, for the, the call for, for the admission to the PhD programs uh, of the 39th cycle. Uh, first of all, um, uh, you have to uh, uh, access uh, to the, the portal and if you uh, are uh, or were a Polito student, you uh, need to access uh, through your teaching portal. Uh, otherwise, if you are new, uh, you need to make uh, a new registration. So you have to go on the website of uh, Politecnico, click on education, and then uh, on uh, PhD programs and postgraduate school, as you can see uh, in this slide. Uh, then you have to scroll down the page and uh, click on uh, apply at Polito. Uh, if you uh, do not have uh, a fiscal code, uh, you do not have to enter it uh, yet, um, but uh, you will be uh, required to do it uh, later during the enrollment procedure, so uh, don't worry for now, just go on with the, the application. Um, once you have uh, entered uh, all your uh, personal information, you will get uh, a username, you uh, have to click on the link you receive by email uh, in order to activate uh, the account and uh, uh, follow the uh, instructions. Uh, now that you are um, enrolled, uh, that you are registered uh, successfully, you need to fill in the uh, application following the order of the, the sections uh, that you uh, see in this slide uh, on the left side. Uh, so, first of all, you need to uh, enter your personal information and check uh, is, uh, uh, if everything is, uh, is okay, and you also need to upload uh, your photo. In the uh, educational background section, you need to add information about your high school studies first, and then your university studies, that is to say your uh, bachelor's degree and master's degree. Uh, please uh, bear in mind that uh, first and second level university masters that in Italy are commonly known as master di specializzazione, and they are obtained in Italy, uh, do not correspond to a master's degree and they do not give access to the PhD program. So be careful uh, about that. 
Okay, now you have to uh, select uh, the uh, English language knowledge certificate that, that you have. Um, and uh, as explained and detailed in the call for applications, uh, English is uh, one of the uh, requirements uh, uh, in order for you to be admitted to the, the PhD program. So you need to uh, present an English certificate attesting your, your knowledge of the language. Uh, the uh, certificate accepted uh, by uh, Polito is uh, IELTS 5.0 or another certificate in, uh, accepted in substitution of it. Uh, among those uh, listed uh, in uh, the link uh, that you can find in Article 6, uh, of the of the call for applications um, uh, uh, be careful because there are some cases of uh, exemptions so uh, some cases where you uh, are not required to uh, attach any certificate and uh, it is uh, explained uh, in uh, annex 4 of the of the call so if you uh, fall into one of these categories uh, and you may be um, exempted from uh, uh, presenting the certificate you need to check the Annex 4. Okay, uh, now uh, you have to select the PhD program uh, you want to uh, apply for and you are required to pay uh, a non-refundable fee of 30 euros for each application you intend to uh, submit. You just have to click on uh, application and then on PhD programs uh, academic year 2023-24. Okay, you can uh, obviously uh, apply for more than one program. <laughs> Uh, okay, now the uh, work experience sections, you uh, just have to uh, detail in this section whether you are currently working and uh, if you do uh, you have to specify uh, and give details about your occupation uh, in terms of uh, employer's name countries business uh, sector of activity of the company and so on and so forth as you can see uh, in this slide uh, as far as the uh, publications as are concerned, uh, you uh, need to add uh, here in these sections all the uh, information about them um, as, as regards the uh, the authors, the titles, uh, the, the publisher and the journals uh, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, then there is the uh, references uh, sections, uh, so you need to enter here the name and the email address of the two uh, referees uh, that uh, can be contacted by the admissions committee uh, to get uh, some useful information uh, for the evaluation of your uh, application. But um, uh, be careful and bear in mind uh, that uh, uh, the name and email address that you put into this uh, section in the, in the application are not enough for you to get uh, uh, points for your uh, evaluation. But in order uh, to do that, you need to attach uh, the recommendation letters and you can do that uh, in the um, uh, following sections, uh, which is the section of the attachments. So here you need to attach all the documents uh, required to uh, submit uh, uh, successfully your application. Uh, so your uh, bachelor's degree, master's degree, transcript of records of your academic career, uh, the, the recommendation letters, and all the, the documents that you deem necessary uh, for your uh, evaluation. Okay, now you just have to check that uh, everything is, uh, is correct, um, and uh, uh, if so, you need to save and, uh, and submit your application. Uh, you need to check the, the declaration. Uh, and then uh, if you uh, pay the registration, um, uh, you need to, to submit the application, but if you have forgotten to enter any mandatory data you will be told what is missing as you can see for example in this slide so you you need a, you you see a red cross and you need to add the missing information and uh, only then you can submit successfully uh, the the application 
Okay, uh, now uh, some uh, information, some useful information about the the call for applications. Um, it, as you can see uh, in this link, um, uh, th there is. Um, uh, this, this link uh, brings you to uh, our website where we publish all the positions available for the, the second session, uh, which is now uh, um, uh, open. Um, uh, so the, the, the candidates who have applied for the second session uh, will see uh, the, the positions that we um, uh, update on the, the website uh, in these days, and we will do that uh, uh, for the whole summer. Uh, there are different types of PhD uh, positions, so the fully funded PhD positions with scholarship, with own research topic, or with predefined re research topic. The difference, uh, uh, of course, uh, is that uh, um, with uh, the, the, the positions with own research topic, uh, uh, there is uh, no predefined topic, but it will be agreed uh, uh, with uh, your supervisor and the coordinator of the PhD program. On the contrary, uh, the, the other type, of course, has a predefined research topic. And uh, uh, if you um, click on uh, the link, and I'll show you how you can do that uh, here, just a second, you will see there is a table with a, a bunch of numbers. And these are the numbers of the positions uh, available um, now. So for example, if you click on the number, uh, you will uh, see the details of the positions available for that kind of uh, specific PhD program. And if you click uh, on uh, one of them, for example, you have all the details about the context of the research activity, the objectives, uh, skills and competencies required for the development of the research activity, so that you will know uh, what is uh, required to carry out uh, that specific uh, uh, research topic. Uh, there are, uh, of course, other types uh, of uh, position, PhD positions. Uh, for example, the PhD positions offered in apprenticeship format, uh, um, which is a, a, a specific, um, a special position uh, where you are um, uh, hired by a company uh, with an apprenticeship uh, format uh, contract. Uh, and there are, uh, of course, other types of positions, but uh, they are all detailed in the call for applications. Um, some useful uh, deadlines for you to know uh, is that uh, now uh, the, the second session um, uh, window to apply uh, is now closed. It, it closed on June uh, the 20th. Uh, the, 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 the other opportunity you have if you are interested in applying for a PhD program Program is the third session, which uh, will uh, which will open on November the second, and it will close on on November the twentieth. The the procedure to apply is the same, uh, and the the PhD programs are set to start uh, on March the first, twenty twenty four. Another opportunity you have uh, if you are interested in uh, the uh, PhD program is, uh, um, and you can do it right now because we, uh, it is open uh, now, is the call for applications uh, for national PhD programs. Um, uh, the deadline is July the 17th, and uh, um, uh, there are two uh, national PhD programs with administrative seat at Politecnico, uh, the, the PhD program in artificial intelligence, and the PhD program in the materials, sustainable processes and systems for the energy transition. Uh, so there, there is the website, the call for application, you can see here the deadline and some specific information about the uh, each of the uh, PhD programs and the universities uh, uh, which are involved uh, in the PhD programs. And if you scroll down the page, you can see the positions and uh, the scholarships uh, available. Um, also, in this case, the positions are updated uh, um, uh, when, when, the, when they are available, uh, we will update the website. So this is the not, not the 
definite uh, situation, but it will be updated uh, in the in the upcoming days. Okay, uh, I guess uh, um, I have finished my presentation on how to apply. Um, so that's it. Perfect. Thank you so much for all the, the info. And I see that we did get uh, a few questions in the Q&A box. I would like to encourage all the participants that joined us in the meantime to, of course, type away if they have any questions specifically about the admission process or about any specific uh, program for the stu student life in general. And um, we will now move to the actual testimonial part. And that's why we have with us Alessandra and Enrico. And I will leave the floor to Alessandra so she can tell us more about her experience as a PhD student at Colegio. Thank you so much. Hello to everyone. I'm Enrico Giglio, PhD student at Politecnico di Torino. And I will try to present you this uh, brief presentation. Maybe it is not just OK. No. Great. I'm just, we are just trying to control. OK, perfect. Is everything good, Enrico? Yep, I'm just trying to control the presentation because there's maybe a delay. Okay, uh, we are seeing the slides display correctly, so everything should be good. Yep. Perfect. Okay, I will try to start again. So, good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Enrico Giglio, PhD student, Politecnico di Torino, currently in my second year of this journey. And in these five minutes, I will try to give you a glimpse of who I am. And I could start without mentioning my home region in Southeast Italy, known for its delicious rustici that are perfect for snacks, pasticciotti that are a sweet treat for those with a sweet tooth, and stunning beaches. But now, with this sort of moment of sponsorship for my own region completed, we can move to when I was it in, faced with the decision what to do in my life. And I really like mathematics. There was an affinity for physics and uh, my support for Juventus because, yep, I was a fan. And it was no brainer for me to choose mechanical engineering here at Politecnico di Torino. And so, as you can see, it was no a uh, tough choice for me. And here I completed the degree, the bachelor degree, and after an Erasmus experience at the Polytechnic University of Lausanne, of Lausanne, the EPFL, I decided to continue with master degree and subsequently with the PhD, both in mechanical engineering, always here at Polytechnic di Torino. And uh, now comes one of the great dilemmas for me, because what do people expect me to do when I say that I study mechanical engineering? Because over time, I realized that people often envision me dealing with gears, steam turbine plant, mechanical workshop engines, and moreover, again, gears. And with, with a touch of embarrassment, any times I have to explain that my PhD is mostly about something entirely different, any times because my PhD is something more related to Italian minor islands, renewable energy, engaging communities in participatory decision making, and unfortunately, unfortunately, no gears. And now, just to prove that I'm not just lazing around, let me explain how it all fits together. Because the topic of my PhD is planning and operation of a rest energy scenario aiming to support the increasing penetration of variable renewable energy sources in our system. Because in order to accept high amount of power from variable renewable energy sources, we have to understand that this variability can, in a sort of way, stress our power grid. And so in this context, I focus on supporting Italian small islands, which are typically standalone system, making them ideal for energy modeling. And this is the reason why I work with this so beautiful landscape. Additionally, I work with a laboratory, the Marine Offshore Renewable Energy Lab, 
the research group where I work, that supports the Secretariat of European Commission for the Energy Transition European Islands, the Clean Energy for EU Islands Secretariat. And this often involves participating in events with communities and policymakers to engage them in the energy transition process. And there's an, a last but not least aspect that, in my opinion, is one of the most exciting and this is maybe one of the main important reasons for which I love my research topic. And this aspect is that by modeling the challenges of the electrical grid, we can use this information as input for mechanical design. And this allows us to develop devices that don't, don't strain the electrical grid, but instead make them more resilient and capable of dealing with uh, renewable energy sources variability. And now as next step of my PhD, I will, the, the next step of my PhD will take me to South Africa, where the stability of the electrical grid has social repercussion and perhaps even more significant with respect to Europe. And, but I, I also to admit that I'm also thrilled because I read that there are penguin colonies there near the university. And there's maybe the reason why behind it. this is one of the main reasons behind my choice. Now, in summary, I'm generally happy for my PhD journey and the the decision to pursue mechanical engineering here at Polytech, Polytech New Dorino, because this program at university have allowed me to develop skills that enable me to shape PhD according to my needs and aspiration. And in a sort of way, I can travel high complex problem and device strategies to solve them. Moreover, this journey and university provide both to me the, the opportunities beyond academia, allowing me to make an impact on the world and receive feedback that helps me grow. And there's also a final note, because early in my presentation, I jogging touched upon the expectation that people have on mechanical engineers and what they truly do. And many of my colleagues excel, excel in more traditional mechanical aspects, such as the one that I mentioned before. And the great things, in my opinion, is that this university equips me with everything, equips them with everything they need to tackle the high level challenges in that field. But this university support also me with my needs and my path. And for me, this path offered the opportunity to explore a broader range of subjects. It allows me to encounter problem of scientific value and uh, em empowering in a sort of way me to respond to a world that demands multidisciplinary solution. And this to me is one of the greatest value of this journey, of this path. And in conclusion, this path not only expand my horizon, but also allow me to contribute to a diverse and dynamic field that constantly evolves and in a sort of way to meet the demands of our ever-changing world. Okay, so thank you, Enrico. I guess that now it's yes. my turn I to... Thank you so much. Thank you. So again, hello everybody and I am Alessandra. Now I will talk a little bit about my experiences here at Polito as a PhD student. So at first, just a couple of words about me. I also come from the south of Italy and I moved to Turin basically uh, almost 10 years ago to study biomedical engineering. So I completed both the biomedical engineering, the bachelor and the master degrees here at Polito. After the graduation, then I joined the PhD program, always in bioengineering and medical surgery. And I'm, I've been traveling a lot between Italy and Finland. And this is because my PhD program is, uh, let's say, a little bit unconventional since it is both an inter-university PhD involving two different Italian universities and a double degree PhD involving Polito, of course, and another university that is located abroad. So starting from the, the, the former, so the first uh, relationship, as I said, the inter-university PhD involves two different Italian universities. So Polito has established some inter-university PhDs, and the one in bioengineering and medical surg surgical sciences is uh, shared with the Faculty of Medicine of Unito, that is University of Turin. And this 
uh, interaction allows to collaborate with medical doctors, which is fundamental for us as biomedical engineers, because we can work together and we can identify problems and then provide solutions according to the true needs of the healthcare system. And um, this integration allows to, to merge uh, the engineering world and the, the practical one, so the clinical one. So the aim is to uh, bridge the gap between the research and the clinical practice in order then to offer the high impact innovative solutions for daily problems of healthcare system. And this high interdisciplinarity helps in conveying all the efforts of different professional figures, such as engineers and medical doctors, towards a unique direction. As said, the other side of my PhD is the, the double degree PhD. And uh, this is because Polito allows to take part into a double degree under a co-tutel agreement that is signed by two different universities. So this means that the student will uh, study and will leave two different universities. So at the end of the journey, the student, the, the, the student will earn two degrees effectively. Uh, in my specific case, the second, my second university is the University of Juvascula, that is uh, a city in, uh, in Finland. Specifically, I'm working closely to the uh, professors who work at the Faculty of Sport and Health Sciences. And uh, these are what I um, think are the main aspects, so the, the positive aspects of um, working under this double or joint degree, because this program allowed me to activate a, a close collaboration with researchers of different backgrounds. And I had the opportunity to live and experience two educational environments, that is the one, the Italian one, uh, offered by Polytechnico and the, the Finnish one. So I lived or I've been living uh, a proper cultural exchange. And of course, this allowed me also to expand my professional network. But now I would like to, to show you what is or what, what are the main activities of a PhD student. So there is a central main project, and here there's, for example, mine that is about the instrumentation of wireless methods to examine the sensory motor system in different conditions. And um, this main project requires to uh, like requires different steps that are the ones here shown uh, that typically are uh, repeated over the years, because everything starts with the reading of the state of the art, so just the reading of literature to get to know and to get informed about the state of the art. Then we uh, move to the data collection, so the on-field experiments. Then we analyze the data that we collect. And only at the end, of course, we write the results uh, in the manuscript, so we publish something. But of course, this is not only, or this is not the only activity in a PhD, because there are also other activities equally important, such as the attendance of PhD courses about hard and soft skills. That, for example, Polytechnico di Torino, but also other universities allow to uh, to follow, so students can join these courses. Then uh, a PhD student typically attend also congresses and seminars to share the results. So to let's say spread his own or her own research. Then also tutoring is an important part of the process because as PhD students, we usually take part to teaching activities. So we somehow help or support our supervisors and professors to uh, for the for the academic activities. And finally, there are also a series of side projects that may be somehow correlated to the main project, but uh, they, they are like a satellite, different satellites. So to conclude, I just summarized through these bullet points what I think are the, um, the main advantages in 
undertaking a PhD program here at Politecnico di Torino, starting from the fact that a PhD is the highest academic degree and it allows not only to achieve a professional development, but also a personal one. And mine especially is being a continuous cultural exchange because of the double degree program uh, that of course, Polito allowed us to, uh, to to join and to build, and uh, this contributed to increase my network as well as my employability that would be fully appreciated also after this journey. So that's all for me, and I would like to thank you for your attention. Of course, thank you all so much for both the testimonials and the time that you put in, in this presentation. And of course, to all the participants that join us later, do not worry, you will have access to all the information that we are um, presenting you with right now, later on. So uh, we did get a lot of questions. So I was wondering whether you would like to open the Q&A. And of course, uh, I would like to start from the questions that we got in the chat, just so we don't lose track of them. Um, uh, an international student specifically asked, as a student enrolled in the um, uh, Laurea Magistrale in Pianificazione Territoriale uh, in Polito, he is graduating in September. He's asking how can he apply for a PhD for the following year and what should he choose as a background studies? Uh, Davide, I'm afraid we do not hear you once again. No. Just try to plug and unplug your headphones. And in the meantime, of course, uh, to all the participants, if you have further questions, uh, please type in the Q&A box and we'll gladly take them uh, in, a, in a while. Thank you. Maybe can, you can hear yes. me now? Okay, we can perfect. hear you now. <laughs> Okay, perfect. So I will start replying to the first question. Um, so yes, you can apply um, if you are graduating in September, because uh, if you want to apply for the third session of the ordinary, ordinary call for applications, uh, the deadline to take your, um, uh, to obtain your master's degree is the end of December. Um, what should I choose for the background studies for my master's? So you to fill in the application, uh, stating all your uh, educational background background uh, related to the bachelor and the master degree. Hmm. Perfect. Thank you so much. To move forward, we have another question uh, related to a student from India looking for a PhD in molecular biology. Uh, are there any? And if yes, uh, are they fully funded? Okay, as Jessica um, has already told you, um, we will update all the uh, positions available for the PhD programs twice a week until uh, um, until the upcoming weeks. So maybe if you are looking now for the available position, you will not find all the uh, position positions that there will be available. So you just have to check the website. Um, um, in order to uh, have a look uh, at all the PhD positions available. Perfect. Thank you so much. So to move to the other question, a participant was asking whether it's advisable for someone who's done um, their course and thesis, I'm assuming they are referring to their master's, uh, to apply while waiting to receive the, the actual degree. Yes, uh, in any case, uh, uh, our uh, advice is to apply uh, in any case. <laughs> so even if you are, um, you don't have all the, all the uh, formal documents in, this, in the moment you are applying, the suggest the, the, our advice is to apply. And obviously you, you must have all the required documents by the, the call for, provided by the call for applications, but uh, you, you can apply and then you uh, will uh, uh, you will have the uh, official certificate once you have graduated. Thank you so much for the info. Um, so I will ask you a, a very specific question that, that I've seen a couple of times. Uh, a couple of participants have asked whether they can apply for a PhD position going in straight from their bachelor's. Uh, sorry, I didn't get the question because there was a... 
Uh, Not a problem. So two participants were asking whether they can apply for a PhD position without having an actual master's, uh, but just with a bachelor's. Uh, okay, no, in Italy, it is required by the national law that if you want to apply for a PhD program, you must have a master degree. Uh, so the, the, the only uh, condition that they may you can uh, add is the fact that you will uh, take and obtain your master degree by the end of, of December if you want to apply for the third session. But in any case, uh, the master degree is a required uh, um, degree that you may, must have. Thank you so much, Davide. So to uh, the two participants that were asking for uh, an email address, I'm referring to David and Mohammed. Of course, you will have all the information to get in touch with Polito after the event. But in the meantime, if Davide or Jessica, if you want to write the email that students can reach out to uh, in the chat, that would be great. So uh, prospective participants that have very specific questions can get in touch with you and solve their specific cases um, beyond this, this live event. So um, to get back to the questions, uh, a participant was asking if there are any scores that you take into account when evaluating a PhD application? Okay, um, so generally speaking, each there is a, an evaluation committee for each of the PhD program uh, you will uh, apply, and each evaluation committee will decide which are the titles that they want to uh, evaluate for the um, for this call. So the, the, our advice is to uh, provide all your uh, titles, uh, such as the masters and bachelors uh, or uh, publications or whatever, uh, because each evaluation committee will decide how and what to evaluate. And it can change. So um, maybe the evaluation committee for um, bioengineering uh, uh, we'll decide to evaluate some of the titles, but mechanical engineering will decide to uh, evaluate something else. So uh, everything you have, uh, upload it and uh, fill in, in the application so that the evaluation committee will uh, have all the information to evaluate them in the best way your application. Thank you so much. So to move to the next questions, uh, I've seen a couple of questions asking about the language requirements. Uh, Khalid is specifically asking if he can write his thesis in English. Okay, so um, as you know, the, in, the language requirements are related to the English language. So you uh, must have an IELTS certificate uh, equal to five uh five point zero uh grade or you can also have an equivalent certification recognized as equivalent of the IELTS um, certificate by Polytechnic in Torino and that are enlisted in the call for applications. Um, there are some cases of exemptions from the presentation of the English language certificate which are detailed um, also in the call for applications and they are related to uh, which university in which country you have attend, uh, you have attended. So um, have a look at the call, of, a call for application in order to uh, check if you fall in one of the cases of exemption. Thank you so much. Uh, so to the participants who are asking about specific PhDs, whether they are available or not, as David mentioned earlier in Jessica as well, of course, uh, you will have access to the PhD positions that are open. And of course, uh, that list will be updated uh, frequently. So you can check out the new positions available um, in, in a timely fashion if you'd like. So I would like to move to the questions that are uh, actually coming in the Q&A box. Um, so uh, a participant was asking uh, if they have a, a master's in electrical power engineering, uh, are there any PhD positions open focused specifically on electrical machines and drives? Yes, there is a, a PhD program in electrical uh, engineering. 
which is one of the most, uh, let's say, important PhD programs that we have. Um, if you want to, uh, to, um, to know more about the PhD programs and the, and the research topics that you can find in that PhD program, you can contact us and we'll give you uh, the uh, reference of one of our PhD professors uh, which can uh, let you better understand the research topics that you will find. Thank you so much. So to go to the ne next question, a participant was asking, of course, since he's interested in applying for a PhD in mechanical engineering, whether he should take a GRE for the admission process. GRE uh, is no longer a requirement, so you don't have to take the GRE for um, the application, but if you have it, the evaluation committee can decide to evaluate the GRE test. So if you have it, it's better for you and you have to upload it in the application, but it is not manda mandatory. Thank you so much. Uh, so we have an Algerian student in Hamui uh, who just graduated this month from his MSc in architecture. Um, studying in, in English. So he was asking, since he has an excellent GPA, what are his chances to apply at Polito? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, obviously, as you can imagine, <laughs> uh, higher, the, the higher the average grade he is, better chance, more chance you have to join the PhD program and enter for the PhD program. So let's say that your uh, average is quite good. <laughs> so I think that you have a good chance. Um, but so just pay attention to apply and provide all the documents required. Yeah, perfect. So I think a 4.95 out of 5 would qualify as a pretty good GPA. Perfect. So good news for you. Uh, so let's move to the next questions. Um, I mean, uh, we have another question relating to the English language proficiency. Uh, a participant is asking if, if he or she studied for two years uh, for uh, their master's in English, is it mandatory to present an English certificate anyway? Uh, it, it depends. If you fall into one of the cases of exemptions provided by the call for application, so generally speaking, I would say no. Uh, you Maybe you have to provide the English language certificate because it is required, but just check if your uh, uh, master or um, bachelor degree uh, is indicated is on list in one of the cases of exemption provided by the call. Thank you so much, David. Uh, can I please ask you to plug and unplug your mic? I think we are hearing you distance, like from a distance from far. Maybe. Maybe now it's better. Much, much better. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so we have Ankita from India. Um, they're asking, uh, they're interested in applying for a PhD in history. And I think um, they have a bachelor's in history, but their master's in human rights. Uh, are, are there any PhD positions that are uh, mm. compatible with the specific uh, backgrounds? Uh, I would say no, because I, as you can imagine, Polytechnic Torino is focused on engineering, architecture, and design. So um, maybe it, it it would be quite mm, difficult to find something related to uh, human rights. Uh, but just check the available positions. Maybe you can find something interesting. Um, I would say in, in PhD programs in architecture or um, something like that. Yeah, architectural heritage was, was the one that came to mind too. Um, okay, perfect. So to move to Sergio's question, uh, are the PhD, uh, is the P a national PhD program available for foreigners? Obviously, we accept all candidates coming all over from all over the world, so there is no <laughs> limit to this. Perfect. Uh, and to move to Jamal's questions, uh, he has several actually. Thank you so much for the enthusiasm, Jamal. Uh, and he's from Pakistan. Um, he studied electronics engineering uh, in 2018 and has a postgraduate in energy management, but he did not complete his dissertation. Does this affect his application? Mm, if 
I would say if your university system does not provide the final dissertation, that's okay. Obviously, it's not, it's not your fault. <laughs> um, the evaluation committee will evaluate uh, your uh, educational background, uh, considering uh, how your university system works. Perfect. To move to his uh, second question, he was asking whether it's possible to have a research assistant position to support uh, with the living expenses, or if perhaps Alessandra and Enrico want to chime in on this from their own experience, what are the other scenarios where PhD students could support themselves, aside from, you know, stipends or scholarships? Thank you. Yeah, um, th there are, uh, you, once you will be in Polito, you will find um, lots of uh, opportunities to um, support your living. So I would say yes, um, it depends uh, year by year and PhD program from PhD program, but generally speaking, yes. Perfect, thank you so much for the info. And last but not least, uh, he's asking if he does not have any work experience related to the PhD he's interested in, will that affect his application? Um, no, uh, we say obviously uh, all you, all you um, your uh, background will be evaluated according to what you have done and what you have studied. Um, my suggestion is not to be scared <laughs> about the competition. So um, don't ca don't care about what the the other candidates may be uh, may have or may be better than you. Don't worry about that. You just apply, and the evaluation committee will uh, um, evaluate your uh, your background and your profile. Um, but don't be scared about that. Someone else can be <laughs> can be can have more experience than you. That's not a problem. <laughs> Of course, thank you so much for the info. To move to the next questions, um, Kender is asking uh, if he uh, has he, he acquired his master's in 2021, but he has a, a gap of one year. Uh, does he become eligible or not for, for a PhD position? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So he is eligible still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. So great news, Kender. Um, so to move to Pash's question, uh, he's interested in summer internships at Polito for different subjects like information technology or different courses for computer science. Are there any specific, um, for example, um, additional activities that can be carried out besides a PhD in, in these subjects? Yes, maybe Alessandra and Enrico can can tell more something more about this, but generally speaking, uh, attending a PhD program does not mean that you just have to to attend courses and teaching courses, etc. You do lots of research and you can have lots of experiences to to carry out, such as uh, providing lessons or. Uh, um, uh, support your uh, supervisor during the exams of the master's and bachelor degrees. Uh, so I would say that there are more than one experience to be to be made during your PhD program. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, I see we we still have some questions to go through, but I do want to encourage all participants who may have joined us later. If they have any questions specifically related to one of the PhDs, or if they are just eager to know more about the student life. And of course, if you have any questions for Enrico and Alessandra, please feel free to, to type away. Um, so I would like to move forward with the remaining questions for the moment. Um, so Yogendra is asking if there are any uh, deadlines for a applying for the PhD positions now available. Okay, um, as Jessica told you, uh, in this moment, um, there is a, an application period open related to the national PhD programs that are two, two national PhD programs at Politon. The deadline is uh, July the 17th. <laughs> <laughs> the 17th. And pay attention to the time because it's 
12 p.m. Central European time. So uh, pay attention to the time because after that time, the application will, the application, the apply procedure will close. Um, so if you want to join the, the national PhD programs, now is the time to apply. But if you want to apply for all the other PhD programs at Polito, you will have to wait until November because the third session will open on November the 2nd and will close on November the 20th. Perfect. Thanks for double checking. Um, <laughs> of course, we have a question that just came through from Danilo. He's asking if the title's evaluation for the second session uh, is going to be published in July or September. Okay, uh, the evaluation titles will be published by the end of July and um, the interviews will be held in September. Pay, please pay attention to the fact that you will not receive any individual communication. So you have to check the website regularly in order to check if there is any news about the evaluation assessment process. Perfect. Thank you so much. So to move to the um, next questions, Ali is asking if it's possible to be admitted to PhD studies without any prior publication. Yes, obviously it depends um, depends on uh, uh, how many candidates uh, there will be for that PhD program. So there will be a, a ranking based on the evaluations made by the uh, evaluation committee. Uh, generally speaking, yes. Obviously, it depends on um, uh, how um, on the top of the ranking you are. So. Um, if you are in, uh, in the best position, uh, you have a more, the, the opportunity to join. Great. So uh, I see a question about the uh, difference in applying for a predefined PhD program or for a self-research proposal program. So the participant is interested in the latter. So what are the requirements for the research proposal program? Okay, so there are... Um, there is no difference um, uh, related to the application uh, for the uh, predefined research topics uh, PhD positions uh, and uh, the PhD positions without predefined research topic. Mm, maybe the only thing that can differ is in the uh, letter you will have to provide in the documents because you can refer to the um, you can propose, I would say, your own research topic uh, within the, um, the uh, PhD positions without a predefined research topic. But generally speaking, there is no difference on the requirements. Thank you so much. Uh, so Pash is also asking, and I don't think we've mentioned this before, um, if he can take a PhD program uh, remotely. So. Uh, if that no. would count. Okay. Uh, uh, no, uh, that's because mm, we really encourage the fact that uh, staying at Polito will help you in uh, um, attend in the best way your PhD program. And also because as you can imagine, if you need to do research, you must be in laboratories uh, and you must um, join uh, all, uh, all the activities uh, with all the other participants. So it is very important to uh, be here uh, in Polito also because you will join the and uh, discover the city and, the, and Italy generally in general. <laughs> but uh, there is no possibility to uh, take your PhD program remotely. Thank you. So in short, you would miss all the fun. So that's definitely <laughs> the, the best part of, of studying a PhD in Italy. So you, you want to enjoy that in presence. Uh, of course, uh, we, we do have some more questions. And at some point, I will, I will ask a, a couple of questions myself for um, to Enrico and, and Alessandra. Uh, but in the meantime, a participant is asking, um, can he apply for a PhD in November's window, even if he will graduate in March? No. Mm, if you want to apply for the third session, so the application session in November, uh, you must obtain your master's degree by the end of December. Perfect. So that was a clear answer. Um, so 
A participant is also asking uh, if they are to apply for a predefined PhD topic, is it a good idea to attach a related research proposal or not? Yeah, yeah, in any case, um, you can do it. Okay, so it's the extra mile that will get you the PhD. Um, okay, perfect. So uh, we have a couple of new questions I see uh, about the opportunity opportunities of doing a PhD, but with an external company, even from a foreign country. Hmm. Okay, uh, Polito has lots of agreements uh, with companies um, in Italy, in Europe, and I would say also all over the world. Um, to make it simple, I, I will say that uh, when there is a company which pays a part of your scholarship, uh, you will do your research activity together with the, com the, the company. And um, so you will go uh, in the laboratories of that company and so on in order to uh, go on with your, uh, with your uh, research. Um, there are lots of PhD positions uh, made uh, thanks to the funding we receive from the companies. Uh, so the answer is uh, obviously yes. Great. Um, so Sergio is asking if Polito helps with visa um, processes for family members. Uh, we, we can help you in that mm, with this. Generally, we provide documents uh, uh, supporting the fact that you have won a PhD position at the Polit at Polita and you need the visa, uh, for, obviously for coming in Italy. So, but these cases are very particular, so we'll um, handle them once by one. Perfect. Thank you so much, Davide. So Malik is asking uh, if there's an application fee for the PhD. Application procedure. Direct with my bachelor, um, you can apply even if uh, uh, you have not obtained your master's degree now, but you have to obtain it because uh, PhD can be uh, joined only if uh, you have a master's degree. So this is very important. And yes, there is an application fee, which is 30 euros for each PhD program you want to apply. Um, so in the moment, our uh, suggestion is not to apply in the very few uh, moments before the deadline, uh, because you have to pay during the application procedure. And sometimes you can face difficulties, especially if you are from abroad. Um, so pay attention to the deadline and make your application not not <laughs> not in the last days. <laughs> For sure. So you need to stay on top of this, but I'm sure it's going to be worth it. And uh, speaking of worth it, uh, I I saw several questions about scholarships and. Uh, you know, sponsorships. So I was wondering whether we, we could take a step back and sort of recap everything about how students would obtain a scholarship, uh, if there are any specific criteria. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, there are lots of scholarships uh, um, because uh, obviously we encourage students uh, uh, to come at Polito and uh, have uh, um, have a uh, founding uh, or have um, the money to live uh, and study at Polito. Um, we are very proud of the fact that Polito is one of the uh, few universities in Italy that have uh, the highest um, sc um, scholarships. And so the amount of the, of the money you will receive is, um, is uh, higher than than the scholarships that you can find in other universities. Um, and so uh, it is very important to, um, to, uh, to make your application in following the call for applications in order to uh, understand how you can apply for a scholarship and, uh, and, and everything else. Uh, 
I would say that there is no specific criteria. Uh, you just have to apply and then you will choose the scholarship you are interest, interested in, um, but nothing more. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the time that you put into answering all the questions that came through. Um, to wrap it up, I would like to ask Alessandra and Enrico uh, one question specifically about what is their main takeaway from their PhD experience at Polito? Uh, and of course, uh, would they do it again if they have the chance to do it? You can start, whichever of you wants to go first, of course. Yep, maybe I can start. And as I said before, I'm really happy for it. And I'm really proud of this journey that uh, I I start with Bolido. And in my opinion, maybe the a key point of this university is that this university supports you with your needs and uh, give you the possibility to build your path. And in my opinion, this is the one of the key points of this uh, opportunity. Thank you, Marito. Yeah, I perfectly agree. Uh, indeed, one of my uh, biggest um, like uh, hope for for my future when I started this program was to start some collaboration with some universities abroad, and uh, Polito really helped me to build from zero this collaboration with the University of Juvascula that is uh, really um, allowing me to, to, to grow because uh, of course you face new experiences, you get to know a lot of people, you improve your language skills and this is really one of the most uh, important and positive aspects that I uh, that, that would push me to retake this experience again. Thank you so much for, for the insight. Thank both of you for uh, your, your presence actually here today. Uh, and of course, Jessica and Davide for all the information that you handed out. So I know that uh, if we were to continue, we'd still get many, many more questions because undo undoubtedly uh, one single event is not enough to cover all the doubts and all the specificities related to uh, each and every one of your cases. But I am happy that we did manage to cover quite a lot of questions today. And of course, to all the students that are interested in applying for a PhD, uh, if you join us later, do not worry. All the information that we covered during this event, uh, you will be able to review it uh, later on. Just keep an eye out on your email inbox and um, you will get the recording of the event, but also um, the, uh, the contact to get in touch with the PhD unit. So for those of you who are still connected, um, you just receive a message in the chat with the information to open a ticketing um, a message uh, through the ticketing service at uh, Polito. So if you have any uh, specific questions uh, about your own situation, please feel free to use that link and to reach out. And of course, to those of you who uh, stayed with us uh, till the end, uh, you, you do get the chance to ask for the certificate of attendance, just in case you, uh, you may have any use for it. Uh, you will find the link uh, to request it in the chat. And of course, it has been a pleasure to have you all today and uh, to just really give you this opportunity to make the most out of the, um, this event. Uh, I hope it was useful. I hope it gave you the useful insight that you need to make your uh, decision to make up your mind on this very important step in your life, in your academic and, and personal life. And for any further, further questions, please feel free to use the links that we popped in the chat. So now without further ado, once again, thank you all for joining us. Thank you to all the panelists on behalf of Polito for uh, their presence here today. And it was great to have you. I hope to see you uh, for the next event in partnership with Polito. Thank you so much. Have a nice bye. one. Bye bye. bye Until bye. next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a nice rest of the week. Thank you. Bye bye.